here to a big night of fights. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside my ringside partner, Teddy Atlas. Looking forward to all the action today, and we're just about set for it. In a fight like this that everybody's been talking about, it's always so interesting to see these opening moments here in round number one. How effective can the style of fight, the pace of the fight, it being a busy fight, be for the high Keep it up. Well, that's everything. What's the sense of being high endurance or fast if you don't have the kind of pace, the kind of landscape that you can use it? Showing what a skilled fighter he is with this counter punching. And now just wasting everybody's time holding on. Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. He comes with the straight right hand. Halfway through this round, a nice crisp hook after a fine defensive effort. Oh, they both land flush with uppercuts. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. Body shot lands, it was the right. The professional's movement's really helping him out, avoiding that punch. Very effective with the block and then the score. Hopkins is getting himself into the mix now, landing that left hand. Stop, Takes stop. one to give one. Uppercut in return. End of the round here. And as I glance around ringside and look at the judges, I'm wondering what they're writing down because that was a tough round to score. Yeah, it was. And, you know, it's the kind of round where one guy would be really smart to take a page out of the book of Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, where Leonard stole rounds at the end, where he just clipped off 30 seconds, and that's exactly what the judges remembered. Nice, sharp, fundamentally sound hook right there, and it served him well. Didn't get it done going to the body there. Good looking counter punch. Oh, you got this one. He gets hit, but he gives it right back. And you see what he can do when he sends that right to the head. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Yeah, Good work it. with the combinations there. Bernard Hopkins is now really on target. Halfway through round number two. Hey, gotta see that coming. Let's Commits go. to the straight right. Now he ties up there. Oh, hands up, hands up. Missed that uppercut. Blocks a shot and then lands an uppercut of his own. Good counter punch. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Final 10 seconds of round number two. Doing what you're doing. Keep the jab bumping, then throw the lead right hand. You're winning this fight. Okay. Please. You can throw him up with some head moves. That's it. You gotta land him. And round number.
number three is underway. And you can see he wanted to do that as he holds on there. Unable to score with the uppercut that time. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. Teddy, among the things that we should be looking for early is which fighter can show a wide array of an offense. Yeah, you don't want to always be coming in that front door all the time. You want to come in the side door every once in a while, you know. Sometimes you want to maybe even come through the roof, down the chimney. You want to mix it up. Well timed by the professional. He took a step back, landed the counter punch. Exactly what he wanted to do. Able to land the headshot. <laughs> the professional's objective is to land that jab, and he did so right there. Teddy, you talk about going out and making a few opening statements here. The jab has spoken That's loudly it. for him. It. Yeah, it has spoken loudly. What it's told his opponent is you're not just going to walk in. You're not coming into my house. It's going to be hard. I got a couple locks, a couple padlocks on here. And we come to the end of the round. Come on. This is it. You got to make it a fight now. You can't just move around. You got to move your hand. Right? Let's go. Hey, listen, I'm not going to stand here and watch you. Our first chance to take a look at Teddy's scorecard here as round number four is underway. Hugging on the inside. Uppercut! And he clinches yet again. He just missed that shot up top. Ninety seconds to go here in this round. Hopkins is landing a combination here. That's what he does when he's at his very best. Professionals in a good rhythm defensively here. Teddy, what is that, a credit to his ability to anticipate? You know, also, it's the teaching. Let's give the trainers credit. Of course, let's give his background of the amateurs credit, but he learned how to get away from punches. This is technique that was taught to him. Very nice work to the head. The right hand landed. Not able to land the uppercut. Keep it up. Keep it up. That's it now. Nice work out there. Keep fighting smart and keep busy. Yeah. Round number five has arrived. Able to 
dismiss his opponent's shot and then comes back with an uppercut. Hopkins is finding out right now that this counter-punching style is not getting the results he needs in these middle rounds. What is the answer? Well, when a guy's not coming in and walking in, you can't counter-punch. I mean, he's not, he's not giving you the kind of turf that you need. Now you have to find a way to create your offense, to lead a little bit. That starts with the jab, getting off first. Fine work with the left hand. He landed well by the professional. Bernard Hopkins is showing that he's got some defense of his own. He got away from that punch. Hopkins is left, landing well. Comes right back with some offense of his own. Hook, hook. We count down the final moments of this round. The professionals looking really good after that round. Teddy, I think it's a good fight. I think it's a close fight, but I believe it's a fight that he's winning. Yeah, it's the kind of fight, though, that you can't afford to let up at all. Or do what you just said. Think that you're winning. He can't really think that way. He's got to think that he's got to take one round at a time. The rest of the rounds, he's got to win each one of them. Undoubtedly, the most effective element of his entire arsenal tonight is his jab. He's so committed to fighting on the outside, and he's jabbing away beautifully. Well, Customato used to tell me, Teddy, when you're in doubt, jab. Well, this fighter, when he's been in doubt, he's jab. When he's been short of himself, he's jab. As you said, he's made a jab fest of this all night long. He took a shot, but he came back with a right hand of his own. Do that again. Bernard Hopkins is just punching air that time. His opponent was able to get out of the way. Reaching the halfway point of round number six. Hopkins is doing well here with that two-punch combination. Well-targeted counterpunch by the professional. Good-looking counterpunch. Blocks that blow, and then a counter-uppercut. Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counter-puncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head much. He can time him, he can counter him. Bernard Hopkins' last round was a big improvement. I mean, that's more of what he's trying to accomplish in this fight. Down on the scorecards, but now things headed in a better direction for him. Yeah, to me, he was cooperating with his opponent before. Right now, he's arguing with him. Hey, arguing is good in boxing. The professional's impressing the judges and himself with that right hand. <laughs> Bernard Hopkins going old school there. B-hop with your basic one-two. Accurate shot, straight right hand comes in. Oh, and he stays downstairs. He gives as well as he takes. You saw it on that exchange.
at the halfway point of round seven. In and out. Hopkins is almost looking foolish that time he missed so badly. He's got half of the equation figured out. He's throwing a lot of punches. But the more important half of the equation, he's way off the mark. Yeah, well, you know, you should talk to a golf pro. You know, if you want to hit a golf ball, you want to hit it straight, you wouldn't stand crooked, would you? I mean, your feet would have to stand where you could hit the ball where your feet are pointing. That's the problem. His feet are crooked. They're pointing the wrong way, and his punches are going the wrong way. Right to the head with that right. That's a momentum. He is damaged badly there. And yet another big shot comes in. Bernard Hopkins, the victim of a solid power shot. Hopkins goes down. One, two. Bernard Hopkins likes to control things. Right now, this fight may be out of his control as he rises up to beat the count. You gotta move out there. All right, move, move, move. Okay, keep moving. Seven rounds in the book so far. We look at Teddy's scorecard. The professional's in good shape. He is leading on Teddy's scorecard, but a lot of action still to come. This is where things can change halfway through a fight. Yeah, this could be a danger zone. You know, the danger zones, a lot of people, whatever they do, they see them, you know, late in a fight or maybe very early in a fight. In the middle part, they think they're past that. You're not past that. You stop doing what you're doing, and this can turn on you very fast. just grabbing on to his opponent. Hopkins is sticking to his game plan, regardless of the fact that he's been down in this fight. Yeah, and one friend you could compliment him for it, Joe. You could say he, he understands who he is. He understands his identity. He's going to win or lose with that. But on the other hand, there are some changes he has to be aware of. There's the uppercut, one of my favorite punches, and it works that time for him. The professional's doing a brilliant job with his head Keep movement. Moving. He's employing top-notch defense right here, and it's frustrating his opponent. It is frustrating his opponent. His opponent needs to make an adjustment of thinking right now and understand what's there, not what's not there. We know that the head's not there, but what's there? The Boom, left hand comes home. Oh, he's hurt right there. He is hurt. Joe, in this kind of situation, it's kind of like a wounded animal. Yeah, you can go after him, but you better be careful because he'll strike out when you don't expect it. Parries the punch, puts one in there. Big, big shot he just scored with. Can he get up from this? He's done it before, but can he get up from a second time now? that he was saved by the bell teddy you've been in a spot like this before as a trainer right now you know what what do you spend time on you want to spend time on telling him why he got in that spot why he got hit but first you got to make sure he revives you got to get him clear-minded you got to get his senses back first hopkins is coming out to fight this round after being knocked down in the previous round teddy any idea? Do you think he's recouped enough here? Well, we're going to find out very quickly by looking at his legs. You're going to look downstairs just like you look downstairs in the basement of a house to see whether or not those bricks are in place or whether or not some of the water has kind of disappeared and the bricks are a little loose. We want to see if those legs are stable if they're firm. Well off the mark by the professional. Firing off the uppercuts. Great exchange. Oh, he is stunned. He could go down. Did you see that? Can he beat the count? I don't think so, 
here, Teddy. Now I know where they got that saying. Falling like a sack of potatoes. And somehow, someway, he's going to continue on here. And if he's going to stay in this fight, now he's got to avoid his opponent like this. Solid. That was a big shot that poured him. And it's a big shot that may end him right here. That looked like the great pitch of great Maddox. His sinker ball. Boy, it went down quick. One, two, three, four. Fight is over. The professionals bombs away worked again. Knockout victory for him. By way of knockouts, your winner, the professional Pascal. That's how you end a fight right there. Yes, he was controlling throughout, but he made a good, clean finish with the knockout. Yeah, as a trainer, you want to know, can a guy punch? Can a guy defend? You know, can a guy control distance? But you want to know, can a guy finish? He got the answer. Yes, he can finish. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore saying thanks for being with us.